Good afternoon. Hello. How's everyone? That's the last session at Ignite, right? Yeah. Quite a lot of people. So Alex and I are standing between you being here and going home. So we'll try to do a quick session. Hopefully quite interesting session. So you can get home sooner. <laughs> <laughs> Depends how demo goes. Yeah. Right, just need to check which session I'm doing today. So welcome to Microsoft Teams voice meeting and devices uh, session. My name is Oksana Milishekina. I work in Microsoft Teams engineering. I'm a program manager. And uh, my role is to help customers with their technical challenges when they move to Microsoft Teams. One of the roles I play when I work with my customers is to ensure that you, our customers, understand what you need to do in order to deliver the best possible call quality for your users. And I'm very excited to introduce my co-presenter today, Alex. Hi, so I'm Alex Ivanov, and uh, I'm a program manager at Teams Engineering Group. Uh, my focus is on quality, and I'm basically a communication channel between customers and our engineering and future PMs. And basically, I'm working with a like, group of customers who are helping us to validate quality and uh, all the quality signals and your feedback, if you know user voice, that's what we're looking at. Um, and uh, we make sure that when we deliver each feature, you get high quality feature. Thank you, Alex. The um, aim for this session is really to introduce you to the voice and meeting capabilities in Teams. And we'll touch on the devices available uh, for Microsoft Teams. Can I just start by asking, I can't really see audience quite well, but those of you who are already on Microsoft Teams or you're on the journey to transition to Microsoft Teams, can I ask you to raise your hands? Ooh, quite a lot. That's good. <laughs> because this session just like an introduction uh, session for uh, voice and meetings and teams. So out of you who raised your hands, how many of you are using Enterprise Voice today? With Teams. Okay, with Teams. Ooh, okay. We got people. Yes. <laughs> good. And uh, are you using Microsoft Teams for meetings? Yeah. Okay, good. And how many of you are using uh, meeting rooms? Teams meeting rooms or Skype meeting rooms? SRS V2, <laughs> aka Microsoft Teams rooms. Okay, so we have audience to uh, share some interesting things with, I, I hope. Let me start by just briefly talking about Microsoft Teams, uh, what it is. So the Microsoft Teams is a hub for teamwork. It's intelligent space for your team where uh, we deliver the communication solution, where you have one-to-one -one chats, you have uh, multiple people in the chat, you can communicate in channels, you have your one-to-one -one calls, your complete meeting solution with different devices available. And when it comes to collaboration, Microsoft Teams is quite a unique application to use because with its deep integration with Office 65, you have all the application uh, your team would use like Word, Excel, PowerPoint, even Power BI, all in one place. And you can co-author co documents quite easily, rather than if you need the feedback on a document, you just probably send it by email and get the version back, multiple people work on it, and you can end up with the multiple versions and it's difficult to keep control which one is the latest one. So if you work in teams with a co-authoring and a SharePoint, it's everything in one place, and multiple people can do work in the same place on the same document. So this is really a very good feature. But not, well, we appreciate that our customers, Office 65 customers, they also use different services, not just only Office 65. So for, for those of you who use different services, you can connect quite a lot of them to Microsoft Teams today. So we offer connectors, bots, bot framework, and um, tabs. Uh, we have over 150 partners you can connect to today, uh, like um, Trello, GitHub. I use RSS feeds delivered to my teams, uh, to one of the channels, Poly. Uh, Salesforce. Polly is a very good tool. Yeah. And for our developer community, we have extensibility platform. So you can write applications to connect to your business processes, uh, something like webhooks, um, 
you can write application from scratch. There are quite a few different codes available for you to, to start with. Microsoft Teams, being part of the Office 65, comes with the enterprise-grade security, manageability, and compliance, as you would expect from any other Office 65 uh, application. So this is just very brief, um, well, overview, which I assume everyone would know in this room. I had the interesting conversation yesterday um, in a, one of the common areas. I met someone who have not seen Teams until the last week when he joined a new company. So yes, we do have people who are new to Teams. I'm not quite sure if we have those people in this room today, but let me take you through a few um, innovation we, we are introducing in Microsoft Teams. First of all, this slide. The Microsoft Teams is the fastest growing business application within Microsoft, within the whole history of the company. It, it, it's, it's such a joy and privilege to be part of, of, of this um, development. Teams provide a great experience on different uh, range of platforms. So for the desktop, we have a Windows-based and Mac desktop. For the mobile devices, uh, uh, there is a natively built client for the iOS and Android. And today we support Chrome and Edge browsers for, for the meetings and callings. We are evolving Microsoft Teams to make it even more powerful hub for the teamwork. And one of the areas where, uh, where we do most of the investment, it is artificial intelligence. So with the power of artificial intelligence, we have opportunity to amplify human capabilities. For Microsoft, it is not about humans versus machines, not just only within the Teams context, but in general for artificial intelligence. It is humans plus machines versus problems. And with, when it comes to the teamwork, there are lots of things artificial, artificial intelligence can help us to achieve um, simple tasks, but much quicker and in a more convenient way. And how do we deliver um, these artificial intelligence capabilities? So we have a Microsoft Graph, which is a vast data set um, and the signals we use from uh, Cortana, Office 65, Dynamics 365, LinkedIn, uh, Windows, across all the Microsoft devices, all the Microsoft devices services, um, they are the signals which form the foundation of Microsoft Graph. And based on that, we can create all sorts of interesting things around the security, uh, around users' behavior. I'll give you a few examples. But before I do a few examples, I'd like to give you some interesting statistics. So we have a billion of user authentication every month. We have uh, more than 1 billion meetings every month and uh, more than 155 um, Office 65 users. But try to comprehend this. We have 6.5 trillion threats analysis every single day. That's quite remarkable. So what sort of intelligence we can get to enhance the security for our users? And that's across enterprise space and the consumer space. This is quite an interesting to know what we can do with own security field. Did I miss a slide? There should be another slide there. No? no. Okay. So let's talk about um, what artificial intelligence capabilities we have today in Teams. Uh, inline message translation. We'll uh, try to demo that uh, later on, but what that means is that if um, you have a multinational team, people can uh, type in their own language and with the inline translation, there is a one click or two clicks uh, in the chat, you can translate it to the language local to the machine. Meeting recording and uh, transcription. So this is an interesting feature. That's used um, Office 65 stream and every time when I show that feature to my customers, they, they, there's this wow factor, because it's pretty cool. Has anyone seen Microsoft Streams? Can you raise your hand if you're using it or seen? Okay, so a few people have seen it. The, the beauty of that is it just, it, it's not just only recording, it's transcribed, and it does the facial recognition. So when it, within this transcription, you can click, you can search, but then you can click on certain phrases and it's gonna take you to that point in the video. Or if you have multiple speakers, 
and you want to hear from a specific person, you can click on the face of that specific person and it will take you in that place in the video. This is really, really good for training, for the all sorts of different um, uh, situations. Uh, what else we have? The mobile companion mode. Uh, that's ability of uh, Microsoft Teams to recognize that, for instance, you walk into the meeting room and uh, there is this proximity joining into the meeting. So if you're in the meeting room and you join in conference from your mobile device and you already joined from the meeting room device, there, is a, there should be some intelligence within the software to recognize that let's do voice and video through the meeting room and maybe use your mobile device as a companion to move, let's say, through the slides. And the last one, but not the least one, that's probably the most popular, the blur, background blur. So when you join the meeting, uh, the attendees would draw their face on, uh, focus on you, rather than whatever is behind you. So you can blur your background if you're working from home or if you're in the office and there is some sort of distraction again on. In Enterprise Connect, two days ago, we introduced a few new features. So I'd like to uh, share those features with you when it's come to artificial intelligence. It's great to have a blurred background. How about customized background? How about if you have an informal meeting and you want to have some sort of funky background like this? <laughs> well, how about if you are actually there on the beach having fun and you want your background to look slightly more professional? Why not? So that's one of the features uh, currently rolling out to tenants and will be available uh, for your users. And the content cameras and intelligent um, capture. That's slightly more complicated to explain, but what that actually means, I, I work remotely quite a lot and I join conferences most of the time remotely. When I join the conference and I'm the only one remote and there is a room full of people and they start co collaborate and use the whiteboard to write, to draw, to discuss. Well, if I have a friendly face in that room, they probably sort of tilt the camera, move the camera, so I can see the, the whiteboard uh, on the video. But quite often, you kind of miss out on that experience. So what the content cameras and intelligent capture does is the camera recognizes, scans the room, recognizes that there is a whiteboard, it's focused on the whiteboard, it's removed the glare, and uh, Zoom in. Zoom in. And then it would be more and, interesting And clean to show it up. You. So basically, we took that office lens functionality that you've seen mm -hmm. in our mobile app and we brought it into Room. So it's part of uh, Microsoft Teams Room system functionality. So you have additional camera that looks at the room, but there is a whiteboard and it will zoom in, capture content on that room and on the board, uh, whiteboard and uh, clean it up so it looks like a picture. And then when you continue working on it, it will continue capturing this content. And um, if, uh, if you, you know, block in uh, the camera, it will still make you transparent. So it, it's actually pretty cool. Yes, yeah, so it brings, it makes meeting transparent, brings to the whole new level. So I have a few pictures. So when someone stands in front, that's what it's gonna look like. But that person is writing something on the board, you don't really see what's there. When the person moves away, the, the camera captures that information and it becomes transparent again when the next time the person moves in. So it, it is really true, quite a remarkable, interesting um, uh, new addition to our artificial intelligence uh, So you feel, you feel more included. If you're remote attendant of the meeting, you feel more included because you really now see the people, you can see video and faces, and then you can see what was they drawing on whiteboard because it was usually like, what the hell is going on there, right? So, you know, there is a lot of questions like, what's they drawing? And now you can see that. Yeah. So now with, uh, let's drill down and focus on uh, voice capabilities of Microsoft Teams. So as Oksana showed you, uh, there is so much power and so, much, so many ways to communicate in Teams. Uh, and, and Colin is another tool is, uh, is that available for you in, in Teams. Um, we describe this feature as Colin for everyone. Um, and uh, Colin was probably the first collaboration tool invented back in 1950. And then, you know, it took another, I don't know, 150 years to come up with Next 
tool like I am in chat, um, and my mask could be off. But uh, with Teams, we truly enable collaboration across the board. And again, voice is still a critical part of it because you probably experience same, you know, have the same experience as I do that you start chat and you're going back and forth. And, and after like tense exchange, you kind of get into the point like it's frustrating. So what you can do is just can escalate that conversation to voice. So you start having voice. And then um, if you want really to get, you know, to see reaction and see body language, you can start video. And then uh, you want to really show what you're doing, like where you're stuck, either you're coding or you, you're trying to build some tool or build some task or just troubleshooting something, you need to show so you can do screen sharing. And uh, of course, <clears throat> if we're talking about voice, you probably want to bring your work phone number you know, in the same tools that you use every day, that basically you, you spend most of your time collaborating with people. So wouldn't it be nice if you can make calls and receive PSTN calls if your uh, partners or customers calling you, wouldn't it be nice not to go and use different tool or hardware device, but just take a call in Teams. And we have that. So we have dial tone uh, capability in Teams. And uh, with dial tone, uh, uh, you can do, uh, you have two options. You have calling plans and direct routing. But before to get there, you need a, a phone system uh, license. And it's part of, um, it's part of our uh, premier SKU E5. But you can also purchase uh, add-on and enable calling with uh, lower uh, E-suite licenses. Now, with uh, a call-in plan, basically, you get a set of functionalities. Um, basically, the idea is that you get full service from Microsoft. You know, Microsoft is your collaboration provider, your uh, you know, office tools provider, as, as well as uh, you know, phone system provider. And with call-in plans, um, you get coverage in 11 countries, so you can purchase and acquire numbers directly from Microsoft in 11 countries. It's very easy and, and simple to provision numbers. You can provision number within three, five minutes. You can acquire a number, you can assign it to a user, and you can make a calls to that user. It also has a 911 functionality uh, to meet your uh, legal and regulatory requirements. And uh, there are options for local and long distance and international calling. But what if you want calling in countries that don't have calling plan? We have answer for that too. We have direct routing. And with direct routing, um, you basically can bring uh, your SIP trunks directly into Microsoft in Office 365. And the reason are, <coughs> Maybe you have very good deal with telco. You know, you've been with them for so long, for so long and uh, they basically, I've seen situations where tel telecom provider giving you minute, you know, voice basically for free or extremely cheap. That's one reason. And you have good relationship and you don't really want to switch from them. Another reason, you know, you have headquarters in US and then you have uh, locations in countries where we don't have calling plans. You can bring your trunks uh, in that country directly into Office 365 and uh, have your dial tone in those countries. Another solution, uh, another reason, uh, if you have heavy investment in telecom equipment, you have PBX or you have cold center, or you have some analog uh, equipment that you want to keep, so you can protect that investment by using direct routing as well. Now, we, we're very flexible in that, that you can use either calling plans or you can use direct routing or both, and there is no limitation. So say you're in the US and uh, you already have established relationships, so you have, uh, you switch into Teams, you move into Teams, and you just bring direct routing, and you don't have to deal with direct routing, you don't have to deal with number portability because it's a process in itself. So you can just bring your direct, uh, direct routing trunks. But you need you know, 
urgently open new locations, so you open office in Minneapolis, Minnesota, and you don't have time to you know, put purchase order, deal with telco, negotiate whole nine yards. You can just go into a Teams admin center, you can acquire local Minneapolis phone numbers, and in five minutes, your uh, team in Minneapolis can make calls. So two options, call-in plans and direct routing, and you can mix and match, whatever works for you. It's all about your flexibility and convenience. Now, I already mentioned, but, but here is like visual uh, for you <laughs> to remember that the availability of call-in plans is in 11 countries, and the rest of the world, uh, you can bring uh, direct routing and get dial tone, local dial tone and local numbers. So let's talk about uh, call-in features that are available in Teams. We call them advanced call-in features, um, and uh, they enhance your experience. In some cases, it could, it could sound, uh, you know, getting to uh, some features that uh, you need in, in a phone system, um, even though it's focused on collaboration, but you still need group call pickup or core part. So with group call pickup, this feature enables users to create custom groups and uh, have colleagues answer your calls for that user. So somebody calls this number to you and, and you have small department or small group of people and you don't really uh, care who answers the call, but you want them to answer the call. So that's a group call pickup. Call Park, it's a traditional telco, tel, you know, PBX feature where Somebody calls to you know front desk, and you know person uh, somewhere in a warehouse or on the floor, and uh, you, but you need to get them uh, get them in touch with caller. So you put that call in a uh, you park that call, and then you communicate that code park uh, code to that person either over a paging system or um, you can text it and they can retrieve it from any Teams phone or any Teams client. Another feature is a shared line appearance. Basically, uh, in some scenarios, like uh, busy scenarios where like it's a nurse station or uh, it's a busy restaurant and they have one main number and multiple people calling and they have multiple phones and they need to answer because they, they want to lose customer or they want to provide service to everybody. So, that means that uh, you can pick up the and answer the call at uh, any device or any client. And we're working on location-based routing. It's in preview, and uh, we plan to deliver it soon. So now, uh, let us show you some of these features. Um, we'll start with basic calling. For those who see my screen, so this is my home screen. My apologies for this uh, technical. Um, this is actually I best in the UK, and this is the garlic fields in uh, West Sussex in the UK, and this is my yeah. girls. Um, project. Duplicate. Great, so now it's a less exciting picture, or maybe it's more exciting picture, it depends what you like more, the garlic fields or the Microsoft Teams. So what I have here, it is um, my Teams client, um, I'm Megan, so it's a part of the um, demos.microsoft.com um, demo tenants. And, 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 <laughs> and Lee. Yeah, and we have a Diego. Diego. So basically, here we have Megan, here we have Lee. Lee, and on this machine we have Diego, and also I have a Diego logged on on my mobile uh, device. Uh, Megan has E5 and calling plan licenses, and I have a telephone number assigned. So uh, Megan is UK based, so she has a, a UK, te UK telephone number, as you can see here. And just basic telephony features, just to show you what PSTN lo call look like. So from my mobile device, I'll dial uh, Megan's number, and we'll see what that number is going to come up as uh, for, for Megan on the screen. It came up. Yep. Okay, so this is the experience, and you can see this is a mobile number, not the other user is dialing because you can see my, uh, don't take enough to my number. Hello? 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 
Okay, so the code works. Code works. It's probably not a good idea to stand so close by. But anyway, so let's mute. Ooh. It's, it's very basic telephony. It's nothing exciting here. What I would like to share next is that um, I had a conversation with the caller, and the caller would like to speak to someone else, uh, to my colleague uh, Lee. And uh, you can do just a transfer, blind transfer. But what I choose to do is a consultative transfer. And the way how it works in Teams, you can uh, just the same as in telephony, you can um, search for, that's Lee. So this is Lee I want to talk to. And from the next screen, if I select Lee, consult, there are two options. I can call and talk to Lee, or I can just send a message saying, hi, I have marketing people. On talk to you. Or maybe I just don't want to talk to you, to those marketing people. So let's need to deal with that. And we transfer the call. So let's see the experience, what you would see. Okay. And I need to do also. Too much hooks. I'm going to do duplicate. And so I, I can see that call is transferred by Megan, and I'm going to answer it. And now we're talking. I'm talking to caller on a mobile phone. Yeah. So this is, again, basic functionality, but it's available for you in Teams. So you don't have to use a different telephone. You just can do it all from Teams. Let's do a slightly different scenario, if I can get my screen back. Um, I know you're all using Teams, but there is one feature I'd like to show you if, if you're not familiar with that or if you're on the journey to, to Teams and you're rolling out in your organization. So there is this uh, command bar. If you're familiar with the command bar, so the, you, we, can, we can call from there. You just call and then select the user, let's say Lee, and we're calling from there. So I don't want to extend the call, so it's just to show you that that bar is available. I can set myself busy from here. It's instant, and let's change it to available again. Oh, that's wrong syntaxes. And what would probably be the most useful to your users if they just want to start using Teams is that backslash help. That's what's going to take you to the, the whole range of the materials your users can use. So as an IT pro or as a training department, you don't need to provide anything extraordinary. You can just use those materials to point your users uh, to help themselves for self-service. So it's a slash help. And if you do just on the slash, you'll see there is a different uh, a list of the commands available from the command prompt. So if you like to use the keyboard shortcuts, this is a really good uh, thing to use. But I'm digressing from the voice. Let's go back and see what sort of voice configurations available for uh, Megan. So if we go to settings. Uh, the first the feature I want to show you is uh, delegates. So on, the, on the general tab, we have manage delegates. So it's basically there are two types of delegates, people who delegate call to me and people I delegate call to. So no one delegated calls to me, so let's nominate a few people I want to delegate to. So let's, let's do Lee. Lee is my friend. So he can make calls on my behalf and he can receive calls on my behalf. So let's add. Back to settings. And uh, if we have a look at the call answering rules, you can see that I have now forwarded my calls to my delegates. And let's, uh, let's just test that experience. If I go back to my mobile device and call Megan, uh, and that's the call forward. So theoretically, if it works correctly, I should not see a call on my screen. So my phone is ringing. And my client is giving me a toast, and it tells me that uh, it's a call for Megan, so I'm her delegate. So if, you know, if I see this, I would answer it and say something. Thank you for calling the office of Megan Fox. So this is a delegation. And um, from the same place, if we go back to my screen, please. Thank you. Let's see what other settings available there for the calling rules. 
From the same place, you can um, do either call, ring me, and new number or uh, contact. So this is the uh, parallel ringing. So you can ring your uh, client and let's say your I don't know, desk phone or your mobile device. Then we have uh, uh, my delegates, no one else, just only just delivered to my team's client and a call group. Call group, that's when you set the call group. If we see what it looks like in terms of configuration, so when I add, let's add multiple users, uh, Diego, okay. So the call group, it's the call will be delivered to this group, um, although the call might be destined to me, if I forward to this group, it's going to be delivered to this group. And the way how the call is going to be distributed, so there are two options, all at the same time or in the order I specified for this group. Okay, so let's do save. And it's it's very similar experience to the delegation, but let's do call a ring me and the group. And uh, let's see what that look like from the user experience again. So you can see that the call is delivered to me, but then if we uh, check the my group call. So this is a Mac experience, same look and feel, but still adjusted to uh, Mac user experience. And of course, on a Windows machine, I see that it's uh, forwarded. Okay, so let's clear the call. So this is back to my machine. What are the um, uh, settings that are available there? Just so we're not going to test them, just only show what's there. That's probably the feature I'm going to be using after this presentation, showing you all my mobile number. Block calls with no caller ID. So if you don't send the caller ID to my mobile, I'm not going to answer. And also uh, for, for the ringtones, you, you can set the different ringtones if it's a call for you, if it's for your... Um, um, forwarded calls or if it's a delegated call. So that sort of features is available here. That's the user experience. Let me just briefly take you to the um, admin portal. So we have uh, Teams and Scaffold Business Administration portal where you can figure this sort of settings. Today, one of the reasons I want to mention that that's today when you sign the number and calling a feature specifically, they are configured through the something we call legacy portal. While it's loading, it, it just uh, lets you know that this is uh, uh, experienced today. And uh, uh, the intention is to bring everything back under the Teams admin portal. So what we have here, if we go to the voice, you can see the voice users and it's the, the matter of just selecting the voice user and assign the number which is available for you in the pool of numbers. You can see that there is my Lee, Megan, Diego does not have a number. We found phone numbers for that location. Let's assign the number and uh, emergency location, save. Done. So from this moment, given a few minutes and I call that number and Diego will, will receive that incoming call. So this is how simple it is really to provision the users with the, uh, Microsoft telephone numbers. Okay, so how's demo? Yes, yes. So and, the question and, was if we have any reporting. Yeah. So we do have reporting. Um, so you, you, there is CDR and there is the uh, call quality dashboard and call analytics, and I will mention it. Um, and you know, if you have more questions, we can uh, talk about it in, in the end. But let's switch to uh, to the meetings. <clears throat> so um, I think we can all agree that meeting experience is not great. And with team with teams, we working hard to enhance your experience. Um, there are um, multiple challenges and, and teams uh, enables this collaboration and through uh, engagement of teams across the board. So my team, for example, is uh, distributed across US uh, and EMEA and APAC. And uh, you know, working together in teams, we can 
collaborate, share, share ideas, you know, have meetings, and it's all fluid and native experience. Um, more than half meetings uh, have, you know, at least one remote attendee. I'm usually 100 percent, you know, I usually have all those meetings 100 percent. I'm usually the one uh, who's remote. So being able to see everybody is uh, in a meeting becomes very important. And video becoming is a norm for meetings. Um, so number of uh, devices, meeting room devices, increasing uh, rapidly. And uh, mobile phones are also changing the way how we uh, you know, do meetings and how we collaborate. So the challenges uh, that um, that common. We, we did survey, we did research and uh, around challenges. And on average, uh, you know, 10 meetings, uh, users have 10 meetings per week and uh, people usually not satisfied with those meetings. And they uh, feel stressed, they feel the meetings unproductive and multiple tools are used. You have to use Outlook to schedule meeting, you have email thread about meeting, you have documents somewhere, you know, you store them locally. So with Teams, we address in all those uh, challenges. And uh, because Teams is single hub of collaboration. And you can meet anywhere on any device that uh, works for you. And even better, you can, you can switch uh, seamlessly. So in my example, uh, you know, me being mobile, but at the same time, you know, I need to, uh, you know, do some work remotely. And I find myself that sometimes I, I, I have to join meeting on the mobile at airport. And then at some point, you know, I join on the mobile, I get to my office and I need to get to better experience on a big screen with multiple, uh, you know, everything content available on my fingertips. So I can switch from mobile to desktop and back and forth uh, seamlessly. And we do have this uh, companion mode on the mobile. So <clears throat> Teams experience is fluid. So it, it, we design it that it's simple to use. That if you uh, get a reminder on your mobile in a pocket, you just pull it out and you join the meeting. If you walk in a room, uh, we, that meeting, if you invited the room, is already there. If you didn't invite, we detect with proximity for feature on the mobile and, SR and, and uh, MTR that you are in a room and we connect that room system, that room into meeting. Also, Teams is supported on Surface Hub and Surface Hub is so huge and so great that I had to put separate slide for it. And again, it provides the same uh, fluent and, and similar experience, familiar experience with Teams meetings. Mobile. Um, with mobile, uh, users join meetings and you can uh, share content, you can share your screen from mobile, you can share, uh, you know, you can share PowerPoint and control PowerPoint from your mobile. So you don't have to pull out the whole laptop, open it and do this whole nine yards, you just do it from your mobile. If you think to the challenges that I just uh, uh, listed, um, there are three areas, three focus areas that we really work into streamline. It's before meeting experience, in meeting experience, and after meeting experience. So with before meeting, uh, you need to schedule it, you need to find availability, you, you, need, you, you probably want to work on agenda and you want to share content, and instead of saving it locally, sending multiple copies, you can do it all in a meeting. Uh, either you can schedule a meeting in a channel, so you don't even need to invite people. They get invited automatically because they're part of the channel. Or if you schedule in one-off meeting or <clears throat> non-channel meeting, you can still uh, can start chat within the meeting and work on agenda and work on documents. Then in the meeting, you, you can join on any device at any time and uh, you can record the call and you can switch between devices, whatever works for you. And you can record meeting. And in, inside the meeting, you can do transcription, translation, and uh, uh, when you record meeting, that means that if somebody couldn't make it uh, and 
miss the meeting, but they didn't miss content. So they can always follow up, they can always catch up, and if there is, uh, you know, find out if there is any action items that were assigned to them. You know, if somebody vol volunteered them to do something. Then after meeting, <coughs> Uh, again, you have recording, you have transcript, and you can search transcript, and you can search by keywords. And when you find the keyword, like yesterday I actually had uh, to deal with some customer escalation and got into this he said, she said situation. And I know that call was recorded. I had status call, I recorded the call, and, but it's 30 minute recording and it was 1 a.m. Um, so I wasn't really, you know, excited to listen to the whole recording, 30 minutes. So I just searched for keyword. I was searching for name. I found the name, it was actually minute 28. And I clicked on that word and from that moment I listened to recording. And I kind of refreshed my memory, who said what. Now, we infuse intelligence in our meetings. So, especially with mobile devices, you know, you have, uh, Wi-Fi, you have data, and uh, you have your favorite hotel, and quality could vary. And if, um, in case uh, your phone is it's like your main tool and it runs out of juice pretty quickly. So if it's run out of juice, we can notice that and, and suggest you, maybe you want to turn off video to save some battery. And if we also monitoring uh, quality and bandwidth, and if we notice that it's not enough bandwidth for video and audio to improve your audio quality, we suggest turn off video. And then uh, you can always have, you ha always have option to call me back. So you want service to call you using PSTN because you, you probably know that uh, hotel Wi-Fi not good based on your yesterday experience or you somewhere in the woods in a cabin and you do know that there is no data coverage, so you just want to call back, or you can just, you know, plain old dial-in. But again, it's, a, it's, it's even dial-in feature is, or uh, process is simplified. You don't have to write down somewhere on the hand your code and, 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 you know, pen. You just click on it and Teams will do it for you, and it will basically make a call and you connect us through PSTM. So in terms of uh, audio conferencing, again, we provide this service. Uh, we have coverage for audio conferencing all over the world. And uh, when you create Teams meeting, every Teams meeting, you have to do some admin stuff to enable it, but every Teams meeting will get dial-in number. We also, uh, have data centers worldwide. And in each region, we have it in Americas, uh, uh, EMEA, and uh, Asia Pacific. And in each region, we have uh, redundancy in terms of data centers. So it's highly resilient, reliable service. We also provide IT admins, to your question, we, we provide IT admins with tools. So you can, you have, uh, Call quality dashboard where you can basically uh, monitor and explore your historical trending data, like where is my quality and get baseline and, and understand and you can really drill down per site and understand what challenges you're facing, you know, if it's video quality, audio quality, and uh, uh, also for real-time troubleshooting, for more like your support scenario, we have uh, call, call analytics. With call analytics, if somebody calls your help desk, they can log in, look it up, that person, look up specific call, what time it happened, and get pretty graph, like what happened, and then drill down on data and troubleshoot that particular call. So let's do short demo on, uh, on the meetings. Before we go into the um, meetings demo, it's again, if you're using meetings today, you know what time will be demoing, so it's not going to be a surprise. So I'll show something different. For, for the purpose of this demonstration, I um, only speak English, I don't speak any other languages, but Lee is talking to me in a language I do not understand. So he says something, this, whatever that means. Something Russian. Something very not like I can read today, specifically for this demo. So how to translate? 
These three dots translate. Oh, OK, I like this idea. Let's do it. That's what it means. So that's how easy it is in line translation in you know, one of the AI capabilities I was talking about previously. Back to uh, meetings. So you can schedule meetings uh, as one-off, or you can schedule meetings in uh, Teams. Let's just um, an example. Schedule a meeting, give it a name. Let's call it Deployment Phase 1. I'm not going to uh, have this meeting in one of the channels, just it's going to be a one-off. And I'd like to invite a few people. I'd like my uh, favorite colleague, Lee, and Diego, please. And uh, schedule. So obviously, we can add more details, but for the purpose of demo, this is uh, sufficient. When Alex was talking about the pre-meeting, meeting, meeting and post-meeting activities, here I have an um, opportunity to chat with participants before the meeting. So let's say, hey, I want, to, I want you to share the ideas before this meeting. So maybe there is something we, we can discuss offline before we have that precious half an hour meeting when we can, can have a conversation. So I can ask what I want to ask people. Hi, I'd like you to share your ideas. Please. Please. And maybe you want to suggest the agenda. Let's do uh, editing and something like tech talks, planning, and uh, Q and A. When the time comes, okay, you see Lee already responding with some sort of suggestion. So when the time comes to join the, this uh, meeting, you can join this blue background if I choose to. You can see that the, the uh, notes of the meetings, they are available. Oh, I didn't send the agenda. Okay, let me send it now so the people can have it in their team. So it's a, the conversation you had previously is not lost, is there. So if you have a meeting scheduled in uh, Teams and channel, all that is going to be in, in channel rather than in uh, separate uh, chat as I have it here. So this is very uh, basic Teams experience. Let me start recording this meeting. Okay, and we have, do we have Diego joining as well? Yeah. Great, so there are quite a few of us now. Okay, good, great. So let's start recording this meeting. Um, one of the capabilities um, I, I'd like to share with you, but I cannot, because it is not currently available on tenants. We announced that in Enterprise um, Connect two days ago. It is live capture. <laughs> Just too many of us down the street. <laughs> can, we, can we change the camera maybe to show the, one of the uh, cameras to the audience? Okay. So uh, the live capture. So we have a meeting or, or, or um, the recording uh, transcription, but the live captions, they are captions within the meeting itself. So if I to switch it on now on the meeting here, you will see it in the middle of the screen. But the way I'd like to uh, show it rather than, oh, that's better. So if I, the live captions are available in PowerPoint today. Is anyone using live captions in PowerPoint? Anyone? No? Yeah. One, two people? Yeah. Okay, so you know, it's, it's really a powerful feature. It's quite an interesting. So uh, let, let, I'll just give you a taste of what it looked like. So if I'd like to share this screen, and if I know which one to share, that's probably this one. So this is the PowerPoint uh, running with uh, uh, this particular slide. Uh, and as you can see, there is um, a live caption going underneath of the slide. It is pretty accurate, even with my not very English accent, even if I live in England for quite some time. So it is really nice and powerful feature for your users. And it's not just only, uh, it can be used in so many different ways. It's just for non-native speakers of your language. It, it, it's just for someone who has a hearing problems. It, it just opens an enormous opportunity for, for different application of this particular feature. So what you see here, it is a PowerPoint live capture. But we're rolling out this capability natively to Teams. We're talking about a matter of weeks. And so. it works with my American accent, too. Oh, I like this. This is very good. You can see the whole audience there. So uh, stop sharing, back to our meeting. And um, 
in terms of recording, <laughs> this is really funny. I need to stop my video. Yeah. Uh, in terms of recording, you can stop recording here, or when everyone uh, mm. uh, leaves the meeting, that's when the recording s stops automatically. As you can see here on my screen, recording. Uh, no, we still have someone in the meeting. Oh, I need to. Hey, drop. Diego, come on! You're always late to do the right things. Thank you, Diego. So now you can see that the recording um, is stopped, but it does take some time to render. And I'm talking about some time, if your meeting is an hour, it's probably going to take 15, 20 minutes. It depends to render and to get all the facial recognition and a live caption. So here it probably take a few minutes or so. You, when that recording is available, you can click on that recording and view it there. But for all those extra uh, features, let me take you to the live stream. So this is where we will see uh, all our uh, recordings. So it's just basically the tests uh, Alex and I have been doing in the last few days. As you can see, so the top recording, this is the one which is processing now after this the, the last test. And if um, I show what it looks like when it's going to be ready. So this is one of the test meetings we've done. What you see on the screen here, so they this is our recording, this is the meeting. Uh, on, on this side of the screen, there is a transcript. So if you, you click... See it? Oh, yeah. oh. Probably need to disconnect the sound, otherwise it's going to be in your plan. Thank you. So uh, when you... Oh, that's not nice. Try again. Demogods. No, it's technology. So uh, if I move through the transcript, you can see it's moving through the video, and you can search here. Uh, I don't know what the word technical. So it takes you wherever that word is. And that's on the details. And if I take you to the people, so here we have three streams. So it's recognized that there are three people in the call. Uh, that's my face, it's Alex's face, and we have Megan. And it shows activity, who was talking when. And that's exactly what I mentioned, that you can, like, when Alex or when Megan was talking, let's go there, I want to hear her, but I don't really care what Lee said, right, or Alex. So I just want to focus on that particular piece. So if we go back to uh, our meeting, you can see that the recording is uh, finished. It's quite a short recording. And again, the experience, if you click on it, you can uh, watch then and there. But the tr for transcript, you need to go to the um, stream. stream. That's correct. <laughs> So let's close it. And when it comes to meetings, um, lots of questions I get asked, oh, how can we enable this? How can we disable that? How about the external people? How about the guests? Can we uh, give or not give control to people outside of our organization? All that sort of questions. And how about this part of the network uh, is not ready yet for um, Rolling out, video. rolling out video, so can we just restrict users on that network to have a video today and just enable it when I there are lots of different controls. Where do you have those controls? This is your administrator, tenant, not tenant, uh, it's a Microsoft Teams um, admin, center. admin center on a tenant level. So let me take you to Teams um, admin center again. And we have Teams policies. What you see here, it's available through the GUI, but also you can do it through the PowerShell commands that, that's uh, given. What type of controls do you have for meetings here? You can allow... Um, Meet now, so instant meetings. You can allow uh, uh, Outlook add in, uh, things like uh, scheduled meetings, the uh, private meetings. Here we have audio and video controls. This is where you allow or disallow transcription. If you want to allow or disallow a cloud recording, so the sort of recording you can stop people recording the meetings. And again, if there is a subset of users you think are not ready yet to uh, use a video, you can restrict the video. And there are some controls on uh, content sharing we have and uh, participants and guests. So you can control lobby. So if you want all the guests to be put in lobby and uh, someone from your organization needs to admit them rather than them just um, getting into the meeting automatically. So this is, can be done here. Meeting policies are per user. So that means you can create a number of different policies and apply them to different users depending on uh, their needs or the organization requirements. That's basically probably it's what I want to say about the meetings. 
Okay. So now let's talk about devices that are available for Teams. Uh, we have a range of devices available for uh, Microsoft Teams across different spaces. The personal space, uh, the meeting rooms, uh, the small meeting rooms, big meeting rooms. Uh, there are quite a few uh, different offerings from our partners. Uh, they're all optimized uh, for uh, Microsoft Teams. They're certified and they're supported by Microsoft and our partners. So what we have here uh, for the personal devices, um, starting from the um, headsets, headphones, uh, personal speakers, and things like that. The personal speakers from um, Jabra, uh, Sennheiser, and Yaling will be updated with a new um, Teams button where you press it. It, it does perform some uh, functions related to, to Teams, uh, like a voicemail, um, um, some... Some cognitive services, cognitive services like services, voice yeah. uh, Cortana, where you can actually say, uh, call Alex. Yeah. Uh, then we have a number of uh, telephones, the devices. If, if your users would like to have a physical uh, telephone set on their desk, uh, we have partners who provide that. Uh, they are ranging from uh, more simple devices where you just can dial, search by name and dial, to more complicated devices where you can have the, the, the context of the meeting, you can join the meeting from there, do some searches, uh, voicemail, things like that. And uh, um, we have the conference room devices. Three best world best conference room phones are running Microsoft Teams software today. It's a well-known Polycom Trio, it's Yealing and Crestron. So it's a smaller range of Crestron. And we have uh, quite a few different configurations from our partners for uh, meeting rooms. So they range from uh, multi-screen, multi-cameras, in, in ceiling sound, the sound bars, all kind of big for big boardroom meetings to the smaller rooms. I, for um, all your meeting rooms requirements, please visit the office.com slash Teams devices uh, website. It, it does list it by partner, by space, and by um, functionality. One of the questions uh, I get asked quite often, can we get all the devices from one partner? Yes, we have two partners today you can get all your meeting devices from. It is Yaling and Crestron. All our devices from partners certified by Microsoft and by partners, and they deliver the best possible quality, and we improve it uh, improve the media stack there regularly and uh, provide the new functionality. So, I, although I probably would not really want to talk about this, but I need to include this slide here today. It's, this is something which is, uh, comes up quite often. Non-certified devices, they're not Microsoft supported. I do get this question asked regularly, well, how about this, how about that? So there are quite a few different, uh, th th those devices on the screen, uh, the one three we see more often. They might be supported by third parties. They might be great on the first day for you, but there is no way third parties can keep up with the innovation and the changes in media stack we do. So you need to be very clear that day one is great, but long-term solution, this is not the solution you want to go for. You need to have a certified partner, certified device to use with Teams properly today. Okay. I have about 30 seconds to say that we have additional resources available for you. Please use uh, aka.ms slash successwithteams for all documentation and training materials. Uh, we have fast track to help you to start with Teams and uh, feedback. You can always provide feedback. So if you have feedback uh, around features, if you have feedback around functionality that is important to you, uh, in the bottom left corner, there is a help and there is option provide feedback. When you do that, you will be taken to a website uh, called User Voice, and uh, you can start with search. Maybe you know it's very popular demand, and you can ask those. You uh, you can upload specific ask, or if you didn't find uh, what you're looking for, you can create new entry, new uh, user, uh, new feature request. And you know, if there are other people who are looking for the same features, they will upload. And what happens, we will listen into your feedback, we're looking at that feedback. Our feature, uh, feature teams are constantly checking user voice and to identify and 
you know, what features in the high demand and what we need to focus on. So you, you have your opportunity to share your feedback. Your voice is heard. We pay very close attention to your feedback. So please uh, use that feature under help. Uh, provide feedback. Yes, I'd like to say thank you very much for attending the session, very last one on the, the second day. And uh, please, please do provide the uh, feedback on the session itself, because uh, those, those feedbacks are quite important in terms of us shaping our future events. So if you like this session, my name is Oksana Melishekina, and this is Alex Ivanov. If you did not like this session, I'm Megan, and this is Lee. Thank you very much.